The hospital is a place where personal stories, personal dramas unfold. But those personal issues inform and inspire doctors and scientists to take these problems to the laboratory. So there are all these stories that go from the personal level all the way to the societal level that we hopefully play a big role in at the University of Michigan. The hospital today uh, and the health system is literally half of the university, a little more than half if you look at our employees and our resources. A lot of people associate themselves with the University of Michigan through athletics, but even more do so through the health system because they've been touched by it in some way. They've been a patient, they've had a family member who's been a patient. We've got seven phenomenal health professional schools here from social work to pharmacy, dentistry, kinesiology, medicine, nursing, and public health. That allows us to build educational and now research and policy experiences that will bring the excellence in those schools together. When the university was founded by the state legislature in 1837, they called for three schools to be established, literary, law and medicine. So medicine was one of the first three schools established on the Ann Arbor campus. From the very beginning, it was a combination of undergraduate and professional education. So you had a medical school demanded by the founding bill of the, of the university. President Tappan, of course, supported that. He began then to build out the scientific labs that would go with the chemistry lab, for example. Our chemistry lab is one of, one of the oldest in the country. It may have been the first on any university campus. The first question is, why do we have a medical school? Why do we have a hospital? What's the point? And that's really key to Tappan's vision because the point is that this is a university and the goals of the university are to teach and to create new knowledge. And so in 1869, this little university in this small Midwestern town becomes the first university in the United States to own and operate its own hospital. The people of Ann Arbor helped to pay for those early hospitals at the University of Michigan. Then, when the Great Old Main, as it became known, was built in the uh, 1920s, increasingly the University of Michigan medical system began to serve the citizens of Michigan. It had a statewide embrace. That gradually grew as more and more faculty were doing research that was important to their disciplines across the whole world. And that's gradually the way Michigan attained a global reputation for its medical work. The integration of our health system with our academic enterprise is, um, is really very interesting and tremendously transformative. University of Michigan was the first major medical school to admit women. Back in the very beginning, of course, classes were segregated by gender, um, but that lasted less than a year for women, which was excellent. They felt that this was not an efficient way to do things and that it was just plainly wrong. Alice Hamilton was a special student uh, in the 1890s at our medical school. And then she went on to found the field of industrial medicine. So what this meant is that she went into factories and smelters and paint manufacturers and studied the dangers of the workplace. Well, one of the people that I think is, is worth thinking about who has a very interesting history, and that's Frank Wilson. Uh, Frank Wilson went to the University of Michigan as an undergraduate, went abroad in the First World War, spent a little time at Washington University, and came back to the University of Michigan where he spent essentially his entire career. The EKG records the electrical action of the human heart. It was Frank Wilson who came up with the precordial leads that go across the front of the heart, um, and that was instrumental in helping us um, find out about heart disease and, and early detection of that. The polio field trials, the, the vaccine field trials, while the polio vaccine was developed by Jonas Salk while he was at the University of Pittsburgh, it was Thomas Francis at our School of Public Health who masterminded this giant field trial of 1.8 million children. And parents were lining up to get their kids in the study so they could get the vaccine. The question was, how can we test it in a way that will persuade the American public that they can trust it? That was a big problem with the polio vaccine. And so Salk, knowing Tommy Francis, Professor Thomas Francis, a great figure in public health at Michigan, said, Francis is our guy. If, any, if anybody has the credibility to conduct a really credible public test of this vaccine, it's Francis. 
interdisciplinary approach, collaboration, really almost a selfless ethos to the point where nothing ended up really being patented, I don't think, as a result of that. That it was, how can, I think he said, how can you patent the sun, uh, was, a, was a Jonas Salk uh, quote. So I think it's, it's correct that that would have been an immensely difficult initiative to pull off successfully at other schools. My aunt was one of the last people in America to get polio. They saved your life here. It was the only place in the country that could, that could do it, that had the ability to take somebody in her condition and keep them alive. And she lived well into her 70s. But and she would say, it was the University of Michigan Hospital that saved my life. So you see what happens when you, when you nurture faculty members who are never going to be known outside their fields, but who develop true expertise. That really is a, kind of a great testament to the development of knowledge in fields where you don't know exactly what the application is going to be. So where I think the University of Michigan fits into the history of medicine in this country is as a leader in medical education, as a leader in, in medical science, and also as a leader, I hope, in expanding out the horizons of the students. And think of all the medical students who have been trained in that great uh, medical school. That's really the biggest impact that the whole uh, practice of medicine at Michigan has made, is the training of great doctors. A gentleman who worked with Tommy Francis, John Massab, went on to then create a, a, a nasal vaccine, a flu mist, which is the first nasal vaccine to combat the flu. The work that's happening now in biomedical engineering 20, 30 years ago would have been science fiction. I like to tell my students, much of what we teach you is wrong, and we don't know what it is. And this is the value of history, because history helps you to understand as a student that knowledge is going to change, that facts are going to change, that what is true today may not be true tomorrow or next week or next year. And we're going down a winding road, and it's nighttime, and we can't see to the end of that road. So if you ask me to predict where we're going, I don't know but we're giving you headlights so that you can see where the road is turning. And once you make that turn, you can see the next turn. So this is what we're trying to teach our students to be able to do. Made possible by the Stanley and Judith Frankel Family Foundation.